Welcome to another episode of ECTV's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today our guest is Ryan Nett. Ryan is a local art educator at Neil Armstrong Elementary. He's a mural artist and the owner of Northeast Art Project and co-owner of Electric City Escape. Nat is originally from Carbondale. Hey Ryan, how's it going? Good, good, good. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, happy to have you here. Um, so uh, Ryan is a local business owner and artist. Uh, could you start off by telling the viewers a little bit about yourself, some of your background? Okay. Uh, I have a Bachelor's of uh, Art Education from Penn State University, a Master's in Fine Art from Marywood University. Uh, I am a K-5 through art teacher at New Armstrong Elementary. And then I run a house painting business that's moving into the mural arts, which is called uh, Northeast Art Project. And then I'm co-owner with my wife of Electric City Escape, uh, escape rooms where we lock you up and you have an hour to find your way out. Wow. That's that's a, a pretty extensive art background like you are legit the real deal bachelor's master's in art you basically surround your life with art and became an art educator as well uh, did you know that you wanted this to be your your path in life early on as a child no not at all I, I, I always like taking things apart and putting stuff together uh, whether it was like uh, finding an old toy or something and, and doing something like that. I thought I would be into something with like engineering, following one of my older brothers in that pas passion. But it wasn't until I took a art class in college in my first year that uh, I did some drawing and the professor of the class thought I was pretty good. And uh, I started going into the art path from there. My mom didn't want me to just go to school for painting or drawing. So that's why I got the art education background. And I really um, uh, always fought her on it, but I would never regret taking those art education classes. They really helped mature me uh, as an as a adult to understand how I could achieve and progress more in life. Wow, so you, you say you were more interested in like engineering and mechanical things as a child, didn't really get into art until college. What what bridged that way for you to actually pursue uh, art classes? So I, I really liked the art education classes because I learned how to learn. Uh, mm. And also uh, educational psychology is really interesting to me. Um, with uh, now that we own escape rooms, we really control the experience that somebody uh, obtains or has in that room. Um, with the fine arts, Fine arts is all about the experience. And I took a year off of college from Penn State, trying to figure out what my next steps were, was having a tough time finding a job. So uh, at the time, it was like the thing to do to go get your master's. So I uh, applied to a couple schools. Marywood had a pretty good package, and the studios were the best studios I could find. They were out of this world, best light around, awesome uh, experience. And that really pushed me to develop uh, uh, a lot of the art that I do now, but the art that I'm at right now is only getting to like a really, really good place mm. through hours and hours of practice, experimentation, and uh, I've been actually going back in my Instagram and posting up older paintings from 10 years ago, and it, it's really nice to see and kind of reminisce on what I was doing at that time with what I'm doing now and everything's starting to come together right now. And I feel pretty, pretty uh, uh, um, confident about where, where the uh, paintings and the art and the experiences that I'm creating are going. That's pretty cool to, um, <clears throat> to actually look back and examine your own growth and your own progression and trying to compare and contrast where you were, where you're at, and where you're trying to take your artwork now. It's something that a lot of artists don't like doing. I have old paintings, and I don't let anybody see these things. They're up mm -hmm. in the attic. I don't even like to look at them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, like you say, just just growing and developing and cultivating your own creative style is that's the journey in itself, and I don't think that that really ever ends. Um, and I love art teachers, just to say that off the top. I really appreciate you guys and everything that you do for, for the young kids to inspire them and help them stay creative. What made you want to teach at such a, a young age in, in elementary uh, where you could have probably did middle school or high school? 
Uh, so it was all about the job position being open, but I really want to teach upper level. And eventually I want to teach higher level uh, 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 eventually. Like I have my master's degree, I could teach college or something like that. Um, but the, the, the cool thing about teaching the younger kids is that they just are free. You kind of give them some rules, but no matter what, the kids break the rules. Like they, they don't follow everything exactly. Now you have some kids that do that, but it's really nice when a child uh, discovers that um, red and blue make purple mm. and they mix it. And all of a sudden you see their, light, their eyes glow and they actually get to gain that experience. And now they have that experience moving forward. Then we try to apply that to their art making. And um, a lot of it has to deal with trying to teach the children how to problem solve to get to a finished product. Um, art class today is not about just making stuff. It's not about painting a portrait. It's about creating and teaching uh, social injustice. It's about um, teaching uh, how to deal with uh, issues at home. It's uh, understanding our visual culture. There's so much more than uh, just making a work of art, how we actually develop and try to have uh, kids um, understand uh, everything going on in the world, we, they make artwork and they get those emotions out, get those feelings out, try to put those objects together to make sense of what's going on around them. Yeah. Um, and everybody comes from different, different backgrounds and whatnot. It's trying to uh, give uh, those students an opportunity to um, uh, explore and find out who they are, or who they can become. Yeah. So you giving these kids that that opportunity to see the world in a, in a different light and the gratification you get by seeing them understand new things or new new ways to create. Um, what and in that vein, what is some of the best advice that someone has given you? Uh, along as as far as being creative or, or trying to be creative um, the some of the best uh, advice I got was to read and read and read and read I actually uh, just crushed one book earlier today and I'm halfway through a second book already today and that's what I was out actually painting on a house painting job today but like when I do the house painting jobs I used to just listen to music all the time now I'm like Audiobooks, I'm crushing books left and right, and they're helping me progress uh, uh, and understand all different types of world. Like right now, I'm reading a book about um, the science of sci-fi and how uh, how they depict sci-fi in movies and they get it as close to reality as possible. It's real interesting. It's way above my my knowledge, but I piece all these different books together that things are starting to make more and more sense. And then some of those things come into the work as I understand it uh, or understand how I could make an object look like it's floating or structured between two colors, um, the layering and process like that. Um, it, it's, it's, it, I, I don't know if I have any one person that gave me a great piece of advice, but just going and reading and learning from other people's experiences as much as possible really has shaped uh, my thinkings of the, how I'm supposed to act as an assistant in the world and how I'm supposed to make my paintings. That's, that's really good. Um, it's like, um, even, even in my art, I do a lot of portraitures, but at the same time, like you say, the, the educational aspect of it, the reading aspect of it, and I try to implement that in my art. And it, it also took me a long time to want to read art history, art, art, art education. I literally failed art in high school, and my mm. art teacher pulled me to the side with a little tear in her eye and said, Travis, I have to fail you. And that's because the painting and the drawing and the sketching, I get hundreds, but the history, uh, Gauguin and the Renaissance, and I couldn't tell you anything about that. And so now, at this point in my life, I, f I see what you mean, the value in reading other people's experience and understanding the different processes mm -hmm. because art imitates life and life imitates art. And without having a, a thorough 
understanding of the art culture and artists who we would consider great artists, then it, it would, I can imagine how hard it is to be to create a distinctive uh, emotional piece of art. Um, and so, yeah, I, I see what you mean by saying read, 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 read. Um, should art be funded? And what roles does art funding play? Art should be funded to a reasonable amount. We can't just throw money at every, or every person and every artist, because everybody would just say they're artists and want to be funded. Um, I think funding sh for the arts is super important in, in the schools. I think Pennsylvania Art Education uh, Department of Ed is actually very supportive of the arts. Um, going up the line to the Federal Department of uh, Ed, I don't know. There, there are mixed uh, things going on there. Uh, the PA department, and I'm also um, a member of uh, the Pennsylvania Department, of, um, not Pennsylvania Department, uh, the Pennsylvania Art Education Association. Mm. I'm the regional rep for Regent 9. Wow. So I'm supposed to oversee the five counties here in Northeast PA. And all I do is basically I get information, pass it out, and then because all the COVID stuff, uh, I wasn't able to um, hold, host the event, but I'm hoping to host the event where all these art teachers can come together and discuss what's going on. Um, the, and I think I kind of lost my, my train of thought there. Um, Should it be funded? Oh yeah, fund it. So I really think our, uh, education uh, in our schools for art should completely be funded. Um, It'll give a reasonable amount of materials. Uh, it's it's crazy how much stuff I actually go through in a given year. If you factor out, I have 650 kids a week, and each one of those gets a piece of paper to draw onto, and sometimes we go through three or four pieces. It adds up to a lot of materials, and it could be expensive to fund an art program, but I think teachers can be very creative to help that funding work and get that art uh, across. Um, I'm actually, I mentioned before about Northeast Art Project, uh, a mural arts group. Um, I've been trying to hire um, subcontractors, uh, other artists to help do murals around the area. And it's, we're picking up some steam. We just partnered with Valley in Motion and the director is Gus Fahey. And we are in the process of partnering with them to uh, help bring community mural art projects to the area. Right now, we just secured about $9,000 in funding for a mural up in Carbondale right by the YMCA. We are still short a bunch of money, um, and we're in the process of figuring out how to develop that funding for those projects. I think um, uh, community art is so important, especially um, in the last couple of years, because it identifies and shows your community who you are. And if you want to instill pride into the community, you want to instill um, respect in the community, uh, that's where the arts come out. This George Floyd mural that just went up like overnight is now a shrine. That's right. And it is, it is incredible that artists came up and did that. And that, that just captures history right there. And putting art into our communities captures the history of the time as well. And it's important. Uh, I think that more funding has to go into developing these uh, projects, whether it's a mural, uh, a monument, um, and more artists need to be involved as opposed to just the policymakers that are above uh, with understanding the process for everything to get done. Um, it, for sure, I am 100% about funding the arts. It just has to be done reasonable and fair so more money can be passed around to create a very good art economy for the artists in our area. And I'm talking more specific to our area. Some other communities have major budgets and whatnot for the arts. Um, right now, we're trying to figure out how they get that funding into Northeast PA. Okay. And Vim is, Vim, Gus Fahey, uh, I, I really uh, like him a lot. And I think he's really trying to do some uh, important things for the area that nobody else has really tried for like a long-term mural arts program. Yeah. Well, that was, you, you completely answered one of my next questions is, is how important is community art or public art for our spaces? And like you said, it, it, it's a sign of the time to show who, 
who is in the community at that time and to beautify the city and to let visitors and everyone know like this is us and this is is how we represent ourselves yeah um and that that's like uh, our we we really been trying to avoid coal mining murals because um there's a bunch out there yeah but in reality that's really what our area is and it's associated with that's the foundation. so and, and it's crazy with everybody uh it, it's tough today a lot of people are talking about stereotypes and like you see somebody, you stereotype them right away. It's really hard for me to come up with a community project when I stereotype the community and try to figure out what makes sense in that community. Because I could do something real crazy abstract, but with these murals, they can't be abstract. Um, to a certain point, they, they need to be something that is um, easily embraced, like a, a still life or a landscape. They, they can be embraced very easily, or a portrait, like mm -hmm. the, all the great ones you do. Um, they can be embraced right away. Um, but something that's completely abstract is not the easiest for a community mm -hmm. to fund and get behind. There, there's like a, 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 a tough conversation that goes between the two. Yeah, it has, it, it has to be something that reflects the majority of the community. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. I get Flex that. the community today and the past. past. And it's like, how am I going to put all that stuff in the one mural? Right? And, and then not be uh, like a $50,000, $60,000 mural. So it's like, how do we get that? And we're having those conversations with the community and building, finding the artists that can uh, get creative with different solutions is, is super important. That's the tough thing. We're uh, I'm actively seeking artists. Um, if anybody's interested, they could uh, come out and reach me and we'll probably do the contact information later. Yeah. Um, could you name three artists that you would like to be compared to? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would love to be compared to Franz Klein. Uh, big black and white paintings. Uh, and he's, uh, he's originally from uh, Lehigh and PA near home where I grew up. Oh, wow. Um, I would love to kind of be, have some comparison with him. Um, another um, artist, uh, it, there's so many, there's so many. Um, I really admire Matthew Ritchie. Uh, my artwork doesn't look like Matthew Ritchie's, but there's a lot that I learned from his work. And um, he does these large installations and he basically was kind of like the first artist is the brace um, experiential art where it's not just a painting on the wall but he encompasses the whole gallery mm. with everything um, and then I really like right now I would like to be compared with them at some point Meow Wolf do you I know Meow Wolf yeah, oh I man I think I follow that guy on Instagram yeah they're yeah. they're they're out in Santa Fe New Mexico they're it's about like to that. open two other places yeah. and it's all experiential artwork so you walk in and like it just takes you on this long trip through uh, interdimensional teleportation chambers yes. and you end up in like almost like an Alice in Wonderland thing, but it's, it's lights, it's sound, it's touch, it's smell. It's the full full package. Sensory, it's like a whole sensory experience going in there. And, and you get the control of the experience of the viewer and then to like get them to bring that emotion out when they get, um, when somebody gets that like aha moment. Like that, that's some cool stuff. I really like Meow Wolf. Uh, I'm a, I admire him a lot. It's not, I, I think I really uh, admire where they have come from, where they're going. It's gonna be real interesting to see how um, art history uh, defines them in the next uh, 50, 100 years because they're not really talked about in uh, major uh, art markets because it's not a collectible mm -hmm. economy. Um, it's more just about the experience and it's like amusement park kind of themed art. Exactly. So um, branching off from that, are there, are there any art trends that you're following right now? Um, right now, actually, I've been looking at uh, a lot more Instagram because I'm getting more involved with Instagram. And I was talking about posting those, uh, uh, putting some old paintings up. Mm -hmm. Well, I sold four of the eight that I put up. I was like, all right, this is working pretty good so far. <laughs> so I'm uh, <coughs> I'm getting more of them uh, together and I'm picking and choosing what I'm putting up there. But I've been going on um, Instagram and 
looking at the different art trends and how people get 500 views on their work of art. And it's real interesting how the dichotomy of the imagery and the sharing works between um, different groups. Mm -hmm. And then cer certain, I got approached by like three people, hey, you want to have this view by more people, pay me a fee, I'll post it on my page. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. I haven't done it yet, but it's, it's kind of interesting. Or I could just pay for advertising the painting online myself. Yeah. So um, it's real interesting. The, the, I, I'm, I'm interested in the trend of how uh, art is exposed right now or, or put out to the public. Because I stopped showing about three years ago. I only did like one show, two shows. One at Rob Letiri's garage. I was you lucky, were there. I was lucky enough to see that show. Yeah, and that was a great show. I have one painting from that show here too. And uh, I, other than that little garage where there's only about 50 people there, uh, none of that works have seen the daylight. And the new things I'm working on, I'm actually really, really excited about. Yeah. And uh, I'm really trying to bridge this gap that I always wanted to do between technology and and fine art. And I'm finding this really happy place uh, where uh, I'm making things uh, digitally, but then I'm going in and painting them um, by hand. And there's, uh, there's different things I'm discovering and learning through process, which is a lot of fun. Wow, so <clears throat> using the, um, the new advances in technology in combination with the traditional techniques of creating art and trying to blend and merge those two aspects of creativity together that's that's pretty interesting and we we live in this in this age where you can't get away from the tech it's, no. it's everywhere if everything is digital your phone your tablet your laptops your cameras even. i got i got a phone and a tablet right here you know, like. and and so i think that the technology has given the average person a sense that they are more creative than they than they actually are, are more talented than they actually are because they can use these uh, digital formats to produce an image mm -hmm. or something like that. But using it as a tool in tandem with the more traditional methods, I find that really, really amazing and that people are doing this because like I said you just can't get away from it it's it's a staple of our lives now it's integrated in our lives and it's going to be integrated and incorporated into mm -hmm. a lot of our art forms nowadays mm -hmm. uh, let's see one more good question for you um, how do you price your work oh interesting so uh, I actually go on a square inch uh, scale a mm -hmm. dollar um, 25 a square inch um, that is kind of like a standard base. I almost try to treat it like real estate. I agree. Say that sounds uh, like construction work almost. Yeah, and uh, and it works out fairly good. Um, but right now, if I have post some works on my Instagram, I'm I'm entertaining all offers because I need to uh, I need to move some product. Yeah. I have so many paintings and so many works at my house that, and I'm now trying to move some product so then I can invest into these other things that I really want to explore with. Um, such as, uh, uh, like I sold a bunch of works the other day and if I did the dollar 25 square inch, the work would have been like 4,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a tough time for that. Uh, and I said, give me a reasonable offer. They gave me a reasonable offer more than I thought they were gonna offer. And I was like, all right, that's good. And uh, it was a, a fair deal. Um, but with, uh, with the, the paintings, um, I do the one, $1. twenty-five a square inch, and then for um, drawings or prints or anything like that, it's really dependent on um, the size. Uh, I have a different formula for that, but I try to really um, be very business oriented. Uh, I, I need to know how much, how much product is going in to make something and then how much return I need, um, and then I want to have consistent pricing. So um, I, actually there was an auction recently at AFA, uh, AFA Gallery where my p painting went up for auction and it was going to go for real low. So what I did, I bought it back. I, and it was a donation to AFA. Yeah. And, but I didn't want that work to go for that low because 
it would then dictate the price to set a standard. Lower, set a standard. Yeah. So I ended up offering a price, I bought it, and I have that available for sale. But now it's like, a weird stigma to it that now I don't want to sell that Seven painting because it has like a, a weird history to yeah. it. Um, and it's like this really early painting um, that I did that's similar to another one I have here that kind of really uh, um, uh, it blew out a whole bunch of different ideas of what what and how I can make a painting. Yeah. And it, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't let it go for, for what it was. So, uh, I bought it and probably people thought I was like uh, crazy buying it, but I, all that money just is a donation app anyhow. So yeah, the paint has um, more value to it than, yeah. than that. And it's, I'd rather own it and just give them a donation than, yeah. uh, than let it be gone for, for what, for what it was going to go I, for. I feel the same way with, um, like I say, even, even though I don't show my older art, I still value it as much as the good stuff that I'm doing now because it is that learning process. It mm -hmm. is that, that period where you're, you're growing and trying to figure out your techniques and mm -hmm. what, are you, what concepts do you want to portray in your art. And so I, I feel the exact same way. Even my older crappy art, I'm not going to let it go for yeah. a couple of dollars or anything. And, and normally people like yourself who develop a name as a career artist, their older stuff becomes some of their most valuable pieces mm -hmm. and f especially for collectors mm -hmm. and so you like you say you just can't let that yeah. early stuff go no for, for such a low price and uh i i like being able to go back and see and look at some of the stuff and like uh and me and my wife actually have a large art collection of other artists work that we bought and we actually don't have a travis prince so i apologize i need Not i need yet. to get a travis prince have one, so. yeah i need to i need we can trade so. yeah 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 <laughs> um but uh, we have we have uh, not not the best collection of Northeast PA of uh, artists in the area. There's some other people that have amazing collections like Jim Lennox or Tom Noon uh, in their house. Lennox is. Oh yeah yeah yeah. He he's he's got a great collection of uh, art, and we we build up a collection. I start. I, I actually like hanging more of the stuff we have from other artists um, in the in the house because it informs my work in the studio mm. if i'm looking at my artwork all the time then i'm just going to be repeating myself mm. and uh there's a, a, a artist that i went to school with martin dole and Mar marty is actually uh, kicking butt right now in new york city and his news paintings are out of this world um definitely uh if you're a collector he i would snatch one up and i have one already but the, these new ones are like, the color's just right on. Mm. And he's really hitting a stride right now. And there's some really good artists out there, but nobody even knows them because it's so hard to get your work out to several people. And then when you do get it out, the, the show that has value. And every all those old paintings, all those old paintings have so much value. And the new ones are more valuable because all those old ones led to the, to new, the new ones. ones. Because without those old ones, you never got through those strides, those struggles, those problems to get where the new work is. And that's why that older work is so valuable to me. And uh, I will only let go of it for like a, a, a reasonable a Reasonable offer. price, yeah. I got asked this, the question recently. I had some company over and someone said, well, what's your favorite painting? And <clears throat> I have a favorite painting of mine and it's not the most, visually pleasing but it was technically challenging for me and like you say that piece helped me learn and understand mm -hmm. a certain part of how to build a painting and it has such a significant value to me because it was an understanding piece I almost did not finish it mm -hmm. and I had to force myself to work my way through it and that's the people can't see that intrinsic mm -hmm. value in in the art um, there's a painting I have in my studio right now. I don't want to finish it because when I'm done with it, it's just it's done. done. Yeah. And it, it's a, uh, it's a, I, I'm like procrastinating and I'm like, I start like five other paintings and the painting hangs there. And all I have to do is paint uh, a red <laughs> and then uh, come in with this crazy color I have to mix. I haven't figured out how to mix it even yet. But once I get it and just paint those layers on, the painting's done. done. And I just really like 
uh, looking at it and understanding it because it put me to another step again. And um, it's 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 a, a interesting play between um, what you want to do and what you should do yeah. in the studio because I should just finish it, but yeah. at the same time I don't. But the process is so much fun. You know, yeah. climbing the mountain is the funnest part. You get to the top, it's like I ah, I made it. But the the journey, the struggle, the process is mm -hmm. what we enjoy the most. And I thought I was one of the only people who felt like that. Sometimes you just, you don't want it to be done. No. I, I'm no. enjoying it so much. I'm having so much fun. I don't, I don't want it to end. Yeah, yet. yeah. So I, I completely get it. Um, you want to uh, talk about some of the art you brought? This yeah, I have uh, two here uh, that are on the easels. And I have two off the easels that will pull up. Um, I actually forget the name of this one. Let me look real quick. I have it all marked on the back. Um, actually, it's this one is not named. It's untitled. This is uh, painted on uh, September fourth, twenty eighteen, and I uh, some of the paintings I uh, if I didn't title it, um, they're just based on the date, and that's like their title, mm -hmm. so people understand. But uh, the date is kind of relevant and everything. This painting is a uh, um, uh, abstract painting that had to deal with uh, layers, and I really am interested. Ever since I learned Photoshop when I was going to school for art education, the idea that you could just layer things upon things upon things until you get a composition that mm -hmm. works is really, really interesting. And then you can still see all those layers, but when you get to a painting, all you have is what's there. And there's so many more layers to this painting that nobody ever, ever sees see or understands, but I know they're there. Um, I like to play with uh, uh, autonomous drawing um, and some of these shapes that you see with all white lines is a drawing that I did and then I project it up uh, and then I try layering. So there's this play between what's the background, what's the foreground and uh, I put a, a cone shape in there to kind of play with the illusion of what, what what's for, what's backwards mm -hmm. and what makes sense. Like there's a, a couple of different questions and. Uh, colors, this one's okay with color. I think my colors are even getting better right now. Um, color is super hard uh, and uh, it's really tough to mix that right color. And then once you go with that color, you just gotta stick, stick with, with it. it. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a fun little composition. Um, I want everything to be put into that, uh, uh, that hard rectangle of the painting because I, I didn't want anything to bleed on this one. And I have that I have that fight sometimes where things want to go off the edges and things that don't want to go off the edges. Yeah. Painting on my right, actually. Let's, oh, uh, oh, let's put ahead. that one over here. You want to put that one over yes. here? Okay. Oh, you got that one? So this one actually is titled uh, In Love with Paradox. Wow. And uh, it also has another title, Geo 3. Um, this is actually uh, started in 2008 and just finished um, about maybe three weeks ago. That's a long process. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't figure out how or where it was going. And then I actually just repainted certain parts of it and got to where, okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy about yeah. this. And this is a, an older painting that I did a lot of exploration where I'm drawing all over the place. And this doesn't look like the last painting because during the time I was painting that, I was really trying to be structured mm. and rigid with my line work. In this one, I kind of, when I was younger, I would just go crazy with line work. And that's oil pastels with oil paints. And then I kind of tried playing with the whole idea of layers, uh, what you can see, what you can't see. Um, and then uh, the, the way I try to move your eye around mm. in the canvas. Um, and recently I start framing more stuff and I apologize, I didn't have anything framed, but the, when these are framed, they look so sharp. And uh, I'm like really impressed what like a frame does to, yeah, to the work. To bring it out. Uh, yeah, it, it, it just really shapes it. Um, and this is uh, uh, the two different shapes. One's organic, one's more geometric, and it's the play between those two in this crazy world um, that, that's going on. I, I love the, the motion in it. And like you say, the, the layering effect, where you even have this cubed rectangle with the little shadow to show it, it floating in that space in here. It's, it's flowing above. And then like you say, the, the geometric in this free form right here is, uh, 
it's appealing to me. I, I like it because your your eyes want to want to loop around, but then you stop here. You come mm -hmm. back and you stop here, and then you, you and then it brings you all the way back into the center. And um, this is a fast painting. It, it, I, I I I started. I really um, don't paint fast paintings too often anymore. I kind of like it just to be there. Mm. Um, this one, because it's so old, and I'm kind of bringing some new stuff into it, I can't change that speed that much. I, I, and if I change the speed too much, I don't mm. think I would uh, mm. be appealed to actually go back into it. Um, and it's, it's a different time that I was painting this. And the recent things I did with, with it weren't all that much, but just little color changes that I did, little color edits that actually brought this piece to a closure for me. Yeah, but sometimes just a little color changes everything dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, the green, if the green wasn't there, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like you say, just those little little things that complete the piece. I, I like the oil pastels too. I, I played around with it a little bit. It, it still scares me to throw that on top of the paint, but I have to get where you guys are at, more, more free, more ex more expressive mm -hmm. and um this is this is a, a wonderful piece I, I really i really enjoy this let's uh see what yeah, else you have this is actually hanging in our dining room but we actually are me and my wife are changing up the whole house so there's like all this stuff coming down and going back wow. up um let's do let's do this one next that one? because this one is the steps in the process here are actually um time frame wise is is why i want to do that let me this is number four. This was painted in a series, and this is all uh, spray paint. I remember this And piece. these are on panel, and uh, with, with I, I have these other ones on canvas. If I'm working with oil paint, canvas just gives you that forgiveness where the brush bounces back a and forth. Bit, yeah. uh, when you're doing spray paint, a lot of this is taped, and I also use something else here, um, um, a vinyl cutter machine. So uh, I could cut my own vinyl at my house, oh, wow. um, like logos, stickers, put them on your car. And instead, I started taking my drawings I was doing and uh, cut Cutting nose and vinyl, vinyl. and wow. then layer them. And then I would paint the white out. Uh, so this was all covered just like you would do with a painter's tape. But I have like this really cool control with it. And it was like this extra step of enlightenment that mm. like, okay, I have this now in my toolbox how can i use it and i pushed it a lot in that show that i did at rob Lutieri's. and that whole show was almost all oil paint i mean uh, all spray paint except for a couple older works that i was working on um the next one has kind of the same process in it too but that's uh oils as opposed to uh, uh, spray, spray paint paints. and this one my wife really really likes this one so i i i, I have to uh plea with her if she really likes something to sell it so it's a, it's a tough thing. Like she had yeah. she had two paintings on me for a long time, that I just posted, and she was real mad because I found them. Um, and uh, this this is a fun um, piece between the structured and the unstructured, and uh, playing with those those forms yeah. on top of each other. I really enjoy that about your work. Like like you say, the form and the layers, and it takes a minute to even kind of decipher the layers going back and back and back, and then the juxtaposition with the sharp whiteness. It just gives a really a, a pleasing aspect to it. And yeah. then the, the, the sprinkle effect where you don't have the solid markings of the spray paint, but just the little diffusion here. It's, it's beautiful, dude. Thanks, thanks. I really, I really I, I, it. I, I'm not a big for painting like a, the exact things like a like a Carbondale mural. I'm painting coal mine stuff and whatnot. I'm not interested in that in my own work. Um, my own work is really an investigation of composition, layering, and what I can do with the paint. Mm -hmm. And that that's what's more uh, fun to me and more appealing to me um, as I keep making stuff. Let's throw that last one. No. The right side up, or yep, yep, and this is, uh, man, that's that's uh, thin on the 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 writing there. I might have to re-sign <laughs> my name. Uh, this is a, a painting from the same. This was painted in 2018, or finished in 2019, early 2019, um, 
And this painting uh, has the shape that you see. This is actually done with um, the, vinyl the vinyl cutter as well. Uh, but in here, you can see there's like a little bit more flaws because you can't get the vinyl to sit so smooth and flat on a, a bumpier surface. Mm. But there's something really appealing about um, the structure in the layers and it just trying to get the right color. And this one just has a lot of energy. It really um, does. A lot of a lot of pop, um, and the rectangular shape you see there. I was making paintings for a while where it was just craziness and a flat rectangle, hmm. and the flat rectangle was to act as your rest spot, so it gave the viewer a chance to breathe, calm down, a little and uh, and then get back into the painting. Hmm. And then this one, like you have this shape in the background, but it's not super common. The edge lines actually slow you down. Um, a little bit because you hit endpoints, and then this little shape here gives you a nice rest on that bottom mm -hmm. corner. So there's like a there's a lot of um, uh, uh, character to it. It feels burning, and uh, um, uh, I, I really like the line shape, line work that I do. I, I have fun with that. I think I think one of the most difficult aspects of composing a piece is to do it in such a way that the viewer's eyes can travel and like you say pause here examine mm -hmm. take a little break come here and and rest here for a minute and then go back and, and still feel the rest of it and I haven't mastered it as well as you have and that's one one aspect that I, I try to focus on too is to make it flow make it make it flow and uh, pull pull the viewer the observer into it the, the, my favorite part of this piece is the texture Mm -hmm. I love, I love that texture. Um, I'm working, I'm trying to actually bring more texture into a lot more works because um, th it does add a lot. The, the problem with uh, getting some textures right is once you build up that texture and say I go paint over something, you're left with that texture exactly. underneath. So you have to really understand what you are, how you want that the, texture. Yeah, you got to gotta see and, the end product yeah. before you actually see it in your, in your mind's eye. And I, I love how it catches that extra little bit of light, you mm -hmm. know, and it, 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 it'll throw that extra little shadow here and here, and that's coming from the environment that it's in. It's not, the shadows aren't a part of the painting, but they still are projected onto the image from having that, that build up of texture on there. I, I really enjoy that. Um, uh, the fun, the interesting thing is the new works that I'm doing drawings on my iPad. I use a program called Procreate, mm -hmm. and everything on your iPad is just smooth. It's mm -hmm. the same as the screen. So now I go into the studio, and now I have to build up texture in the work. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. That's what's appealing, and that's why I haven't finished that painting yet, because I'm trying to get the textures to come out mm -hmm. and not just be a flat painting, but to have a little bit more emotion, more feeling when you come up to see the painting. And that's where I think I, I stopped on this work because I want I want that uh, like a little bit more depth into the painting and I haven't figured out the right texture yet. Um, you using your your iPad um, now it's a tool do you do you think it adds to your creative process? It speeds it up. Speeds it up. Speeds it up big time and then like uh, there's like 500 different brushes and then I just pick and choose and I mess around with a couple, see what happens, and then all of a sudden I find something that's real fun and I'll start using it. And like anybody who gets this uh, kind of program, like honestly, you just have to make a lot of different things uh, right from the start. You won't ever feel comfortable with it until you make everything and, and try to use everything. Mm -hmm. Now I've used everything and uh, I, I came to making this digital body of work that's on my iPad that, um, I'm trying to reinterpret into fine arts, and it's this communication that's going on between that and that. Because I can make it a, consum a consumable work of art that's a digital that just goes up, out, yeah. but it's not. That's not totally what I'm wholly interested in. And then I just got uh, a couple weeks ago my escape rooms invested into virtual reality right before COVID-19 wow. hit, and uh, I set it up at home since we can't have any customers using it. And I got in the tilt brush, which is VR, 
and it is awesome. It is so much fun. And then like you're drawing and like I'm talking about Meow Wolf is experience. Also, I'm drawing and then all of a sudden I'm in it and I'm moving mm. around it and you could touch it almost or feel it. And it's like a whole different experience. And now I'm trying to understand how I could take that and Try put to together other real, works yeah. I have yeah. to understand how it can how it can develop. And there's like all this other light stuff that I'm interested in right now um, that I could take my works and and or my perspective and and use those tools to enhance it or see what it develops into. Art education, masters in art, elementary art school teacher, and you still have a thirst to learn more, create more, uh, advance yourself more as an artist. Very inspirational, dude. Very inspirational. I'm happy you came in and sat down and talked with me today, right? Awesome. Thank you for having me. I would like to just say I really have to thank my wife. I, I can't ever get the chance to do all these things and try them out without her support and uh, her being behind me and her, me dragging her into the studio and be like, Amy, how's this look? How's this look? She, she's definitely the, yeah. the secret hand in the, in the studio because she really does help. Uh, a lot of different things to have that partnership. Some someone who who is a legit artist, literally an artist. We're hard to live with. We're hard to be with, and so I commend your wife. <laughs> you know, we're we're not we're not the easiest people to be with. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So yeah, your wife, she's done an amazing job keeping you around. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, she'll keep me longer. <laughs> This has been another episode of ECTV's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today our guest was Ryan Nett. Thank you for viewing, and we'll see you next time.